Okay, so it, the time has come and I can't lie to you. This is what we're going to need to do. In this section, we're going to look in After Effects. But first and foremost, I'm going to make the case for why you need to use it. Uh, firstly, what we're going to do in this, can it start, there's a new plugin out there uh, which can work within Premiere Pro and kind of do what we need to do within Premiere Pro. However, first and foremost, that's a paid plugin, which I have no problems with, uh, with showing you paid plugins and how they work and if I rate them. But the thing is, is that the only reason that you would, uh, you would want to get use a plugin and pay for a plugin would be if you don't want to use After Effects. And the thing is, the price of the paid plugin is less than the step up from your subscription to Premiere Pro or your, your step up from your subscription just for Premiere Pro to the suite. So the difference would not only get you After Effects, which is needed for the advanced version of this, but also the whole suite. So in all, all honesty, it's a no brainer. And the tracking in After Effects is brilliant. The tracking in Premiere Pro isn't the greatest. I mean, it, it, it worked here, but this was a face. And depending on what we're going to track in this section, we're going to need After Effects. So, but don't worry. Uh, get your drink of choice, a uh, hot beverage, something like that, and get yourself comfortable because that's what we're going to do in this section. And I promise you, by the end of it, you will know what you need in After Effects to be able to achieve this. And then we may just spend a little bit more time in After Effects. Because as I've said earlier in this course, a good editor a good editor at least has the basic knowledge of After Effects. And I will show you how to open this in After Effects. And with Dynamic Link, it makes it so easy. But anyway, first and foremost, let me show you what we're going to be doing in this. Uh, we're going to be using this footage. I'm going to uh, alt and drag this because that's what we're going to use. Um, she's no longer, we, we identified her completely wrong and she's actually in accounting <laughs> for, for a business. Uh, but you know what? Let me cut this because I'm going to set a new sequence and uh, we're going to call this um, tracking advanced. And I've called it tracking graphics uh, in, uh, in the actual course because we are going to track graphics, but we need something to track. Um, and tracking is simply uh, setting a point, some kind of reference point in a video and tracking its movement, just following its movement and doing something with the information that that movement gives us. So this lady here, as I've said, she's in accounting. However, this guy here is 008. Yeah, we need to identify him because we're the bad guys now. Oh, it's awful to think. So what I want to do is I want to track him and put his name next to him. Let me show you what happens when we don't track him. We just put his name next to him. So um, let's say this is um, Jimmy Blake rather than James Blonde, and it would help. James Blond, James Bond, uh, and it would help if I could spell. But this is Jimmy Blake. He's renowned throughout the world as the second best spy. So there's my text. I'm meaning him. Uh, so good. Jimmy Blake. That doesn't really work, does it? I want to have that part of him. Okay. So the way in which we would do this in Premiere is we would find somewhere where we like, maybe have it as he's looking at her. And let's place this text kind of where we want. So we've gone into the Essential Graphics panel. Don't forget, if it, you don't see it, it's just Window and Essential Graphics. And uh, let's change the size of this and the font. I'm going to go for Korea because that's like really spy, isn't it? Uh, and I'm going to scale it down ever so slightly. Do we have a bold courier? Yeah, that's good. Like that. 
happy. Okay, so there's Jimmy Blake. And what we want to do is we want to keyframe this motion. Now, do we keyframe the vector or do we keyframe the actual motion? It doesn't really matter to be completely honest. Uh, and in here, uh, just to kind of uh, do belt and braces, in here, we have all the information that's in here. Do you remember like in the color where you also had Lumichi color under here? It just adds it all here just so you've got it. So if you don't have this to hand and you're just in here, it's just there. It's just part of it, it adds it in. So with that in mind, we're going to actually keyframe the motion of this. So as we've done in the past, we need to toggle on the keyframe for position. Now, what I would love would be for something to come here, come up here to start tracking, but it doesn't. And that's the real annoyance. Um, so what we need to do is, okay, his head has moved a little bit. So we now need to move it. Um, now we could use these. However, if we select motion, you get the bands all the way around the boundary bands and you've got the uh the anchor point right there so we know we can move it so if we move it a little bit there okay he's moved his head a bit there and i know you probably know this but i'm not really trying to sell this because i'm actually trying to show how clunky it is he moved his head down a little bit there and then he kind of moved it there and that's a little bit frustrating and like you see, it's not, it's, it's not the greatest. And until Premiere come up with a point where you can easily track movement, I will forever say we need to go to After Effects. So with that in mind, let's open After Effects. And just to reiterate, if you don't have After Effects installed, as you can see, I have like, well, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, After Effects. Uh, I have two versions of Lightroom, Character Animator, Audition, Media Encoder, and Camera Raw. They're part of uh, Premiere Pro anyway. Uh, but yeah, if you don't have it, it will be down here available in your plan. I mean, look at all the things I don't currently have downloaded. Hmm. What if I can teach myself Fresco? No, uh, that's, I think that's mainly a mobile app, actually, although it does say desktop. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you get it down here, uh, install it, and then you're good to go. So let me show you After Effects. And first and foremost, you're greeted with a splash screen. And this says, welcome, Emma. Uh, it's because it's under our company and my wife sorts out all the admin. Uh, but yeah, I'm still Adam. Uh, and you'll excuse the fact that I've blurred out all down here, uh, but that's confidential information for my clients. So before you do anything, in Premiere Pro to get to After Effects, let's start a new project, okay? And you don't really have to do anything. Well, not yet, but the minute that you actually bring something over to After Effects, it kind of, well, yeah, it kind of wants you to do stuff. Uh, let me just get this to kind of how you would have it. Um, yeah, that's kind of how you'd have it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna to go to File and I'm going to go New Project. However, there's nothing really you can do in here until you do bring over stuff from After Effects. So now that I've got that, yeah, it's okay. And please don't be daunted by this. Let me just size this up because I don't usually use this in this uh, setup. I have an ultra wide and that really shouldn't be that big, but we'll deal with that when we come back into After Effects. So here we are in Premiere Pro. And first and foremost, I'm going to select where I, what bit I want to take into After Effects. And there's a, there's a reason for this. So I'm gonna cut that there. That's, I don't want this last little bit in After Effects. And let's just scrub back. I'm gonna start tracking him from about, I'd say here. So I'm gonna cut that. And I'm gonna duplicate this. The reason why I duplicate this is because once you take this into After Effects, this is going to be overwritten and you can't do anything again with it in Premiere Pro. I mean, you can always go and get the original file and bring it in. But if you imagine you've got a massive sequence, you've got loads of stuff in here. Just best practice is to duplicate it. You can always get, you can always put these cuts back. I like to leave them. 
I like to leave the cuts there just so it kind of lines up perfectly and I know exactly what I'm doing. However, if you ever want to delete a cut, I don't think I've shown you this before. I may have. But if you ever want to delete a cut, you just hold down control. Remember when we highlighted that to add a transition? Well, if you just delete, if it's the same clip, it gets rid of the cut. Magic. I'm going to undo that because I always like to keep that cut. And to get this into After Effects, once it's installed, you just simply right click and replace with After Effects Composition. Don't panic. I'll hold your hand all the way. Let's go. And now, now it wants to go and save a project. Again, please excuse the blurring. Now I'll unblur. And this is where we've been working. So uh, video in here is all the other stuff. Uh, that we've made images. There's loads of stuff there, although it's not showing because it's only saving type as an After Effects project. And what I like to do here is I like to go into animations. That's why we created that in the first place. So I'm going to double click into there and then I'm going to name this project. And I'm going to name this Tracking 008. Okay. Call it whatever you like, but good, we're in. So as you can see, it's brought in our footage and loaded it up. Not only that, but over in here, see project. If I come over to here, we've got project bin here, project. So that's kind of similar. We have two things here, which can actually be drawn back to Premiere Pro. So here's our footage, young ethnic team, young, I can't remember what, what the name was, Young Creative Multi-Ethnic Team Of. So there's our footage and here is our comp. What's a comp? A comp is a composition. We all, it's, it's just referred to in the industry as a comp. But what that is, is a sequence. It could also be argued that it's a nest, but in this right now, it's just like a sequence. So just like we've got Tracking Advanced in here, we have it here doesn't really do a great job of sorting out the folders here, although you can add folders, but I'm, I'm just not going to bother with this. So let's get this just looking a little bit more presentable. Okay. So I'm going to uh, right click and reset to save layout. I'd love to get that over because that's not supposed to be all the way over there because I like to work in here. How can I get that? Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, we don't, I don't normally have all that open when I'm in a smaller, uh, a smaller screen. Um, so we can toggle between these, uh, but I don't think we really need to for now. We've got different, uh, informations here, but we don't really need those. Okay. So on here, you can see that we've got our video track. If we scrub, forward if we zoom out a little bit uh, alt and scroll down just like you would in premiere pro and this is our entire work area now that's what this is called this is a work area if you wanted to shorten this um j just to show you the name if this wasn't correct and you wanted to actually be here and you wanted to get rid of everything you would right click and uh trim comp to work area which is this work area set uh, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what that's there. Um, also, just to highlight that these little marks, remember these marks that we placed here, one there and one there? Well, those have come through as well, which is great. And most things that you add in Premiere Pro will come into After Effects as well. If you've had a color grade, the color grade will be in there. If you've applied a LUT, the LUT will be there as long as you have the LUT saved in the back end in After Effects as well. But that's that's way down the line. Also, just look, this has now changed. This is now our project underscore one linked comp zero one tracking 008. So what that's done is that has provided that name because if we tr if we go backwards tracking 008, that's what we've called this. Linked comp zero one is what this is linked comp zero one. And our project, because the whole project, not the sequence, but the project is our project. Okay. So it does label a lot for you. Um, uh, just as a side, I said it ages ago, but uh, a, a color mat in After Effects is a solid. Okay. And this is what I wish Premiere Pro did. If you wanted to add a solid, that already comes up white solid. 
If I change the color to say that color, what color do you reckon that is? Well, it's magenta and it's already named it. I just, I just, I just wish, I really wish Premiere Pro did that. Okay. So what are we doing here? Well, first and foremost, we need to track some movement. Okay. But let's get some text in first. Um, yeah, let's just do, let's just do some simple text, just simple, simple text. So we go up to here to our type tool and just like in Premiere Pro, when you start typing on here, it creates a graphic here. When you click here, it's created a graphic. It's created an empty text layer. The difference being is that this creates a layer, not a clip. And it's created it for the entirety of your work area. Bear that in mind. Right. What was this guy's name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Did we say bland? If I didn't, I should have done. Now that that text is done, I'm going to go back to the selection tool and this is white. We don't want it white. Do we want it black? Well, we can just easily just go black if we need to. Those are the colors over here. If we wanted a different color, we would go to here and we would color. We could pick our color, but I'm quite happy with it just being black. Okay. Uh, we had it as courier. So I'm going to change the font courier and what's happening there. That's not what we want, is it? No, it really isn't. Let's change it to courier new. There you go. That's better. Uh, what that was, if you ever have anything like that, it's a font that has gone uh, corrupt and they have, it happens all the time. It's so frustrating, but don't worry, just easily just sort yourself out and either redownload it or select something else, which is labeled pretty much the same because that's exactly what that is. Um, so courier bland, uh, courier bland, Jimmy bland, and that's him. So, okay. If I play this through now, well, we've just got Jimmy bland, but we need to now track him. Okay. So what I'm going to do, the reason why I selected right here, is because I've already kind of decided what I'm going to track. I'm not going to track his head. And that's because once he comes into frame, he moves around a little bit, but his head moves a lot. What I'm actually going to track is this little insignia thing on his, on his, uh, on his chest. Okay. So I'm going to start right at the beginning. In fact, I'm not, I'm going to start midway through like we've done in the past. And I'm going to track this. Also, the reason why I want to track this, let me just zoom in. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. You can zoom up and down with your scroll wheel in After Effects. Not only that, but if you hold down spacebar, you can move around without actually moving it. You know, like in here, if we were in motion and we moved around, it would move it around. Uh, that's actually one. <laughs> that's our comp on top of our, uh, our clip. It would move it around the actual area. Not so much in here. You can move things. Uh, and I, I will deal with that in a later section. Um, but this is purely holding down alt and scrolling up and then holding down space bar moving around. This is purely because this is a compositing, uh, software and it needs to be able to do this. And you need to be able to get in and move around easier. That's why certain times when I'm in Premiere Pro, I really struggle purely because I just, I, 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 I the, the things are different between the two. And sometimes Premiere Pro is just nice and simple and it's good. But sometimes in After Effects, you can just deep dive and dial in a lot easier. Anyway, I want to track this. So what we need to do is we need to open up our tracker. If you don't see it on the right hand side, which is here, um, you just go up to window and select your tracker there. Okay. And the motion source is young creative. Now that would have actually already been selected had I had it selected in the actual timeline or the work area. Okay. Let's just move this around so I can see where he is now. And what's been created is we've actually gone down into the layer, not into the comp. Okay. So we've kind of deep dived. 
rather than being in the nest, outside the nest as if it were a nest, we've gone into the clip, okay? And that's why we're now going to, I need to hold down a uh, space bar to move it around. Sorry, I was, <laughs> I was holding down Alt for some reason, my thumb had gone over and we want to track this. So what we want to do in this is we want to track the motion. We don't want to track the camera, we want to track the motion of this. So let's select track motion and we're given this box. What does this box mean? Well, first and foremost, if you grab anywhere in the middle box, but not the actual cross, it will start moving around. Not only that, but the minute you start moving, it starts to magnify. You see how I'm going over and it's magnifying things? That's because it's helping you dial in exactly what you want. And what I wanna do is I wanna track the top of that. The reason why I've picked this as well is because there's a little bit of contrast. There's a color change between these two and that's what I want to track. Now, these two boundary boxes are important when you're tracking. The smaller they are, the slower it may track, but the more accurate it will be. Because what you're telling this is what I want to track is right on this X within this box. However, keep an eye on this box in case there's a lot of fast movement and I need you to consider that this has possibly come outside this box. But don't worry about anything outside this box. This isn't all the way through, but this is from one frame to another. So with that in mind, and as I said, the smaller they are, the slower it may be to track. The bigger they are, the faster it may be to, to track. However, the less accurate it may be because it's looking at more pixels per frame. Before we go any further, we need to go to options. And I don't know why, but by default, this says if confidence is below 80%, adapt feature. That means as we move from frame to frame, if the software engine, which is actually called Sensei 2, if Sensei 2 has less than 80% confidence, adapt feature. Short for, shorthand for adapt feature? Well, just blag it or take a guess. I don't want it to do that. I want it to stop tracking. I don't know what, conti well, continue tracking is kind of what it says. Extrapolate motion, not too sure. I always just say, stop tracking. Just literally stop everything. Tell me where you're having problems. I'll go back in and fix it. Okay, so let's press okay. And let's try and track this. Now, remember when we were tracking, that's the reason why I left this up. Remember when we were tracking this and we clicked forward and back on here to track? Well, it's very similar in here in as much as we have these we play backwards play for or analyze backwards analyze forwards this is track selected mask forward backward this is by frame and this is by frame similar in here track it back by frame that's when you may be having a real problem and you kind of just need it to really you know sort itself out so we're going to go with position here because nothing really changes and it doesn't really rotate. However, if things were rotating and you really need to get that 3D space, you'd also turn on rotation and you'd be given a second track point. We're not gonna do that for this, don't worry. And scale, uh, similarly, it would bring up a second track point. So I'm just gonna undo that, undo that, undo that, get rid. And we're just gonna use this one track point. Okay, you ready? Okay, first and foremost, we're going to track backwards. So let's play it backwards and see how it does. Bearing in mind that if confidence is below 80%, we stop tracking. We can turn this, we can change that up to 90% or 100%, but 80% is a good starting guide. So let's track backwards and see how it does. How good's that? Literally, in that short space of time, it tracked all the way back. If we want to see those keyframes, if we select the, uh, the, sorry, where we're tracking on the video, if we select what we're tracking and press U on the keyboard, those are all our keyframes. 
but you see how it's three lots of keyframes because it's added the feature center, which is that feature center, the confidence, which is the confidence that we set or we allowed to stay at default 80% and the attach point, which is also how it's reading the feature center. So what we want to do is we want to go to the end. The reason why I've twirled these down is because if you recognize this, this, not only these, I mean, we have a square keyframe rather than a, uh, a diamonds keyframe, but it's very much the center, but we have these and these are what we had here. Keyframe moves to the next one. Same here. Keyframe moves to the next one. So what we want to do is we want to get to the very end one. So that's where we started our track and we want to continue through to track the rest. So let's press play and see how it does there. Okay, so now it's stopped. So it's lost confidence. And that's probably because he's turned slightly and this has become a lot brighter. Uh, there's actually a, a tinge of cyan on there and I noticed it over here as well. Uh, and that is a big bugbear of mine. It's called chromatic aberration, but that's down to whoever's, uh, whoever's captured this footage uh, and not me. So we'll leave that. Uh, that's okay. Let's just continue and see how it goes. Okay. It's moved off a little bit there. So let's go back to where we saw it move off. It's down at the bottom. It traveled up from, okay. It's still not quite there. Where did it come off? It's when he moved. Okay, so what we do now is we kind of go a little bit frame by frame to just check where we're at. Um, so I'm going to go up and down, uh, or I'm going to go forward and back with uh, frames. Now in Premiere Pro, we go left and right with our cursors. Yeah, we don't do that in After Effects. We use page up and page down, which can be a little bit counterproductive when you get in here, but uh, don't worry, you will get used to it. So page down, let's see. Okay, that's still on there. We're looking at this X here and around the top of this insignia, page down again, starting to move a little bit. So I'm gonna move it up. And I'm gonna try and track from there. It's still not quite right. Okay, so let's come back again. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. I'm happy with all that. Okay, that's where it comes off. So let's move that up there. I'm gonna change this confidence to if confidence is below 90%. Okay, I'm also gonna close this down. Close this box down and close this box down as well. I only want it looking there. I don't want it to confuse itself with down here as well. So let's try again. Okay, that's good. No, don't worry about your confidence. That's fine. Keep going. That wasn't too great. Let's go back. I'm going up with page up. About there. I'm happy with that. Oh, make sure you're not dragging a keyframe. You're actually dragging the box. Go from there. And let's just track forward a frame. So what this does is rather than going to the next, this is just, uh, this is just tracking and analyzing as it goes forward, just to check that we're on the right path. And we are, and sometimes you need to do this. You need to literally go frame by frame, just to check that the engine is going right. And so things don't get too complicated. Oh, we're at the end. Oh, good. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but some of these were starting to disappear. It only keeps a certain amount of them on at any one time. Okay, so that's where we tracked from. Is that where we wanted to track from? Let's track back now. I'm gonna just track back here just to check if we can just do that quickly. No, there's a reason why I didn't want to track there. So I've just undone that. And that's exactly what I want. Everything is good. We're good. Now, before we do anything else, I want to edit the target. <clears throat> and to do that, I'm going to create a null. Okay. A null object is literally nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's a, it's an invisible thing that we just use to control other things. 
I'll show you what I mean. So our target is the null. We could do it to Jimmy Bland, but we're going to do it to the null. And there's a reason for that. And I'll explain that very soon, but we just press OK. And then we hit apply. We're asked apply dimensions X and Y. X is across, Y is up. Yes, the options are X only or Y only. Don't really know why you'd ever do that, but you just hit OK. Good. So that tracking is there. You see this red box? This is our null. OK, so let's just zoom out a little bit. And there's Jimmy Bland up there. And now if we leave our null uh, selected and we go forward, you see that the null is now moving with it. It's a box and it's got an anchor point at the top left. Doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. All we now need to do is we need to decide where we want Jimmy Bland, the name to be. I'm happy with it being there. We can always edit it uh, because all we're doing is we're adding the tracking motion. And if we leave that there, we're happy with that. At, all we need to do is grab this down here. Now this is a pick whip. And what we're saying is that we want the parent of this to be something else. Please don't switch off. Don't switch off uh, mentally. There's a parent and there's a child. Okay. And arguably, if nothing is affecting something, it's a parent because it makes its own decisions. Okay. Whereas if it's a child, something else is affecting at least one aspect for it. And in this case, we want to make this text to Jimmy Bland, the child of the null, because the null has all the information. You see all this tracker points here. If I select the null and press U, we now have the position keyframes in here, which is the translation of all the tracking data from the tracker from the video. You still with me? Okay, let's pick whip. And what we want to do is this has come up here because we have, have pressed U to show all keyframes. However, if we twirl that back up and then twirl it down, we're given options of, of anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. There's a shortcut to get to position. And the shortcut is quite simply, if we go up with it selected, we hit P. Why would you only want to get position? Well, if you can imagine, if there's loads of stuff on here, you kind of only want to be seeing what you want to see. And in this case, all we want to know is our position. So we grab this pick whip and we drag this down to the position and we let go. And it throws it back to us because it doesn't matter with a null what we're pick whipping. We pick whip the null. Okay. I'm showing you that there because there's a number of things that you will do. If you do embrace After Effects, there's a number of things that you do where you'll pick whip one thing to another. And sometimes you need to pick whip it to a certain aspect, a certain element. Whereas with a null, you pick whip to the actual null and let go. A quick, well, not a quicker way, but the manual way to do it would be to drop this down and say, I want the parent to be null one. It's the same thing, but I, I just like the animation of the pick whip. It's great. Well, nothing's happened. Well, yet it has. If we press play now, the text now moves with Jimmy Bland. It's good though, isn't it? <laughs> and how well is that tracked from that point? Why don't we track it from before? Well, first and foremost, I knew it was going to be difficult. Secondly, what I want to do is I want to put an animation on this to bring it in. How do I do that? Well, as I said, you created, when you created this text, it created the whole thing all the way across. So we first need to shorten this off. Okay. So there's two ways to do it. You can either pull up from the beginning, just like you would in uh, Premiere Pro, or what you can do is you can go Alt and close parentheses, which is the one just to the right of P square bracket. And what that does is it shortens it at the beginning. But unlike in uh, Premiere Pro with Q, it deletes everything and brings it back. In here, it just cuts it off where you've set it. So before we don't have Jimmy Bland. And now it comes up Jimmy Bland. Okay. So now we could, we want to animate this text on. 
So if we wanted to do just a simple fade in, we brought up position by P. To bring up the opacity, what letter do you think? No, you don't use O, you use T. Of course you do. <laughs> I don't know why. What is O? O, o does something I don't really know. Uh, so let's just leave that alone. Uh, so T brings up opacity. And I remember that because it's opacity. Yeah, you're welcome. So how do we affect the opacity? Well, it's quite simple. We um, just sort that out. What's that? That's a keyframe. We're now going to go forward five frames. In fact, we're going to go forward 15 frames. To do that, we hold down shift. And as we did in Premiere Pro, we would press to the right on our cursor one, two, three times. That's five, 10, 15. In After Effects, we use page down, five, 10, 15. And what we want to do is we want to create another keyframe. Okay, good. So what do we do now? Well, if we look at our opacity, there's our opacity, but we haven't got anything to be able to change it. Well, no, that's because it's down here. And down here is the expand or collapse the transfer controls pane. This is always up by default. I close it off before because I'm used to a much bigger screen. I mean, if I, uh, if you see what's on that screen now, if I go to full screen, that's how much room I have. So I usually have all of them open all the way along and I don't really notice a difference, but because I'm constraining this to 16 by nine, so it can be viewed on most uh, devices, I'm all the way over here. So I'm, I feel a little bit bunched in. Anyway, we have our opacity keyframe there and our opacity keyframe here. What we don't want to do is drag this down now. Why? Well, because for some reason, these two are now selected because they're both blue. Click out, get rid of them. If we brought that down to zero, we'd have brought that one down to zero as well. So on this first keyframe, we now pull this down to zero and we're faded out. And if we now press spacebar to play back, we faded it in. Let me just go to fit now so we can see it properly. And there we go. There's Jimmy Bland. See him? That's him. And then just before we get to the end, we're going to hit another keyframe for the opacity play it a little bit longer and then just take it to zero again. Okay. So we've got zero opacity, zero opacity, 100% opacity, 100% opacity. And so we, we effectively put a fade in, keep him on, it's tracking him as he moves and then we fade out. Now, if you want to take a break, this will be a good term, time to take a break. Okay because I want, I'm going to build on this now while we're in here, we're going to build on it. And this kind of, this whole chapter will be your Bible for this kind of thing in After Effects, but I'm really going to build on this now. So if you want to take a break, I would take a break now. Um, take five minutes, take 10 minutes. Don't take too long because we're going to build on what you've just learned. Um, but yeah, take a break now and come back to me when you've recovered. So before we move on from here, let's just jump quickly back to um, our Premiere Pro and go to tracking our bands. That's where we're in. And this is now how it plays out. Or it doesn't. That's because we need to save this. Control and S. That should all save up. And we're four seconds in here. And that now will pick up. There we go, Jimmy Bland, and there he is. Now this is quite labor intensive on here because not only is it bringing through this, it's also bringing through the video and we don't need the video. If I just tab back to here and turn this off, I've disabled this. So the video is on all of this as well. So if I turn off this video, it goes. And it goes there, but the text is still there. It's black, so we can't see it right now. But if I were to quickly go into here and select the text and in character 
set it to white. It will come back here, give it a second to update. And there it is. So what does that mean? Well, if I turn that back to black, Control and Z, and I bring back this bottom layer, this will now run a lot quicker. That was still looking, showing white because it takes a little bit to, uh, to update. But if I now go in and out here, rather than having to pre-render like the whole video, which even at HD uh, with tracking on it would take a while, you saw how quickly that then came through. And as we wait, there's Jimmy Bland and he's there. So bear that in mind, because the only thing we need really on here is the graphics that are on top of the video. We don't need to bring the video back in. And that's the beauty of also duplicating, because then we don't have to have the After Effects file that has been brought in, which as you can see has been brought into here. It always makes a mess, um, but it's been brought into here. But we don't need the video because we already have the original underneath here. And that can really help if you've got a slower machine or if you just want to run your machine as efficiently as possible. So with that now done, what more can I do? Well, the thing is, there's a lot more. Let's just bring on this video again. So we've got it as a reference and there's so much more we can do. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a good friend. And that is not there. It's here. Oh, normally it's in extensions, but they must have uh, used a different coding. Now we're going to animation composer three, and I'm going to dock it just here. Remember to dock things. You just grab it and look where it offers to go to. I have mine living here again. When I'm full screen, I'm all the way over here. <laughs> you can't even see that. Um, but yeah, when I'm here, it's here. And what is this? Well, it's from our dear friends at uh, Mr. Horse. This is the After Effects version of Premiere Composer, and it's even more powerful. But let's go into the essential typography, and I want to go to, um, uh, I want to do a call out, um, and I think that's with the lines, text and line call outs. And this is the kind of thing that we have here. We also have them in, uh, in Premiere. See that? All good. However, in here with this, we can absolutely nail it and go crazy with the tracking. Let me just load these up and show you what they are. So here we go. We've got them all loading up. Good. So we're going to say he's Jimmy Bland and I want two lines. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one. In fact, let me just tilde back out. Tilde, by the way, as you've probably noticed, uh, works in this as well. So there's our call outs and I kind of want it to go. Yeah, do you know what? We'll go. We'll go with this one. Top uh, left top, it's called. So I'm going to add this. And before we do anything, we're just going to sort out uh, the wording and all that. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to get rid of Jimmy Bland there. Don't need that anymore. And in here, uh, this is how it looks. So we've got Mrs. Horse. It always brings in things like that. I wanted two lines. Did I select the wrong one? Maybe I did. I want this one. So I'm going to replace. See how this highlighted? This gives a great option to just replace. So I'm just going to replace there. And cool. So we're now working on one with two lines. So I'm going to say this is Jimmy Bland. And we're going to say 008. And we're going to say Agent 008. He's just like James Bond, but his jokes are really bad. Hence Bland. And I'm going to set that text to black. I'm all going to, also going to set this text to black. And we're going to go with this color line. See all the different things we can change. We're going to go maybe like a steel blue. There we go. Jimmy Bland. In fact, maybe I'm going to set that to white. That might look better. Maybe like an off white. A little better like that. Yeah, I'm going to drop a drop shadow on there as well. So I'm going to color pick and just go with that gray as well. Good. So that's definitely not in the right place, is it? No. However, it can go in any place we want 
and then we can track from the same bit. Remember, all our information is in the null. Okay, so let's place this where we want it. So again, let's get to a point in the video where we want to have it. And this is something that you will see a lot with regards to After Effects. When you're moving around, everything starts to uh, go up to, you know, pixelated and all that. If you look up here, as you scrub, it'll say adaptive resolution. There are different ways in which you can have this, but I just prefer adaptive resolution. Okay, so what do I want to do? Well, first and foremost, let's place the text where we want to place it. And this is all the way. Oh yeah, we're in After Effects. So we don't need to, because in here, if we hit P on our keyboard, we have position. So just like in the effects controls, you got position there. Here we have effects controls here, or you can just grab it and drag it. And we're just going to place that there. Okay. Now, I'm going to get a drop shadow on this now, just so it's there because I can't quite see this, but I do want to keep the gray. Um, I might change that color. Anyway, uh, we go to get a color, uh, to get a drop shadow, just like in effects here, we've got effects and then we've got presets. It's exactly the same effects and presets. Click in here. All we do is type in drop shadow. There it is right at the bottom and we drag that onto the comp that we want to affect. Boom, there's our drop shadow. Okay, I'm going to turn up the opacity all the way to 100. You know me, that's what I like. I'm going to set the softness to try five and see if that's good for us. Okay, that's good. But now that text is black and black. Okay, so the second color text, we're going to change that to white. The only annoyance is, is that it, it applies a drop shadow to the line as well. And until, until they change that and allow us to draw, drop properties on here within Animation Composer. That's what we have, but that's fine. So that's where I want the text. So we now need to move the call outline. And to do that, we need to go for the call out point. And sadly, you can't drag this because it's a, it's a particular bit. So we just start to drag the numbers. And as you can see, when I let go, it started to bring this line down. Okay, I saw it because it was bringing the bounding box of the actual um, pre comp down. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. And of course, we're tracking to here, but we don't have to link to here. Um, let's just affect that position as well. I'm just going to go back a little bit to do it to his head. No, maybe not. Maybe do it to actually where around about where we've tracked. Bring that down a little bit more and maybe over to there. And now we just pre-render it. How do we pre-render in After Effects? Well, it's not shift enter. Anywhere in here, you just hit zero on the number pad and this starts playing through and this green starts coming up. Good, good. What's wrong? <laughs> we haven't got it to track. Grab the pick whip. Let's get to a bit where we're happy with. Good. Grab the pick whip and drag it onto the null. Nothing changes because at that point we want it there. However, if we come back and hit zero again, how good is that? I can see that that kind of is just staying on his bicep and I don't really like that. So I am actually going to move the call out point a little bit closer to him. And because it's not this that's tracking the the information wasn't put on the original text. We can put it onto here because we're just using the null. The null is creating all the things. That's Jimmy Bland. The beauty of this also is that we can actually set the in point to come a little bit longer, take a little bit longer to come on because that's our in point. See how it's stuttering a little bit because it's not being pre-rendered, but it is all right. It's, it's dealing with it okay. And that's Jimmy Bland. <laughs> Preset actions. We could also uh, get this to animate out. I'm pretty sure because what we didn't do is we didn't have animate out ticked. So that's still this one. Uh, yeah, it was. And I'm going to animate out and sadly I'm going to have to replace. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? But it's okay because it keeps all the information because we've told it what to replace. 
it's kept everything. It doesn't always keep absolutely everything, but it has in this case. It's even kept the, dro the drop shadow. So playing that through, there he is. That's Jimmy Bland. Also, with regards to this, if you wanted then to move this around and you thought, actually, it'd be better down here at the bottom left. Okay, let's just do it. We're uh, moving the call out title. So if we hit P on the keyboard, we can easily drag this down, maybe drag it over to the left. Oh, but hold on, the call out points there now. You know what we're going to do, don't you? Which one do we want? Maybe that one. Yeah, replace. And it's just boom, boom, boom. And OK, it does reset the in and out, but it's still got that position. And if we bring him now, get to a position again, P on the keyboard and bring that up. And we move that call out point, drag it up a bit. Maybe drag it over to the side. See, this is the beauty of using Premier Horse or Mr. Horse Animation Composer because, again, I've already seen. That's not the right one, is it? So it's actually that one that we need. <laughs> and if if we'd not, if we just dragged it in and didn't replace, we'd have had to do all that formatting again. So I think we finally got it now, don't you? I know. I just wanted to do it on purpose to to practice. He lies through his teeth. Okay, so we want that a little bit higher. And we're going to bring this call out point just a little bit over here. Let it update. And I'm going to move it a little bit further over here. And let's see how that does. Obviously, we're tracking at this point. This side of the body is going to move differently. Is it going to look natural enough? The minute you hit zero, by the way, the playhead goes back to the beginning and starts playing all of the playhead shows there. That works well. Brilliant. I'd like the uh, zoom, uh, the animation out to be a little bit slower. Yeah. Looks good, doesn't it? And then we just get it out. Don't forget to make sure it's less labor intensive for Premiere Pro. We get away the video, don't need it. That's working on in the background. We can actually see that now. Control S, come out. And now if we want to double check that it's fully come in, just turn that off. And yeah, that's all that's going. If we select the bottom one, turn that off. Yep, yeah, the whole thing goes. Pre-render that. And although, again, it's a motion graphics that's going in there, that's quite big from Mr. Horse, uh, from the animation composer, but it works perfectly. And that fella right there is, who is he? Do we know who he is? Oh yeah. He's Jimmy Bland, Agent 008. And that is how to track text in After Effects or in Premiere Pro. That wasn't too bad, was it? No, I know it wasn't. You're absolutely fine. You got from Premiere Pro to After Effects and right back again and nothing bad happened, did it? So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you more ways to use After Effects with the tracking ability in it to create some great, great effects and just, oh, honestly, this will level up your game even more.